What's up, guys? If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Also, please smash that like button on the video and enjoy the show. I also get really tempted when I'm talking about this topic yeah. to jump around because sure. there's so many layers to it. So right. I'd like to try to do a good job of being organized today. Right. You've already laid out some of the story. Right. Obviously, some people watching this would have seen the podcasts in November, which are available on Spotify, episode 168 and 169 that I did with Ashton. But after after the plane lost contact and we never heard from it again, would you mind just going through the timeline that happens over, say, maybe the next 24 hours or so? Yeah. As we know it? Yeah, absolutely. You know, your analogy... Um of trying to keep everything organized. Like if you've ever taken apart like your lawnmower carburetor or anything <laughs> like that, <laughs> if, you've ever, if you've ever done it the wrong way, you'll never do it the wrong way again. You have to take it apart. As you take it apart, you have to lay the pieces in the order That's in right. which you found them. Because if you then try to put it back together, you, you've got an extra part. Yeah. And you're like, where does this thing go? Especially if it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a complicated case. And we have to treat it like a carburetor. Like we have to know where everything is and we have to sort of parse it out carefully. Um, so we were talking about how the plane uh, was 40 minutes into its flight. It was over the South uh, China Sea. Nobody was paying attention to it. It went electronically dark. So it's no longer on the radar screens of the air traffic controllers. It's not sending out any kind of radio transmission. And there's various different ways that a plane stays in contact with people on, on, the, on the earth and um, all of them were turned off or switched off. We don't know exactly, like with, you don't have to turn off your radio. You can just not send, say anything on the radio, right? Are there any known technological outlets that exist outside of say air traffic control, maybe when we're talking government military that would be able to still read a plane that is turned off like that? Yes, yes. Okay. And it took... Uh, a couple days for the public to learn that in fact, so the, the plane goes electronically dark, yeah. most more or less simultaneously with that, it makes a hard left turn. It does a, a U-turn. Um, a U-turn so aggressive that um, you can't just like plug into the autopilot, like change, turn, turn me onto this heading. You actually, because if you say I'm on heading, um, you know, 030, I want to go into heading 210, the plane will like do it in a pretty chill way. Civil aviation mm -hmm. is about easy maneuvers. Um, someone did it much a hard turn. Uh, they went back, not exactly the way they came, but more or less reverse course, went back over the Malayan Peninsula, whence they had come, passed over a Malaysian Air Force base called Butterworth, then went over this body of water called the Malacca Strait. And they flew up the middle of it on one side, you have Thailand. On the other, you have Indonesia. So it sort of avoided those airspaces. Yeah, can we put a map up, Alessia, if you don't mind, just of this area? You know where the general area is, but continue. Yeah. And so as, the, as it was doing all this dark, it was being tracked by military radar, mm -hmm. which is kind of like um, a flashlight or a searchlight that's being, you know, in the invisible wavelengths being shined out into the world. And it catches anything that is, you know... Um, it could be a rain cloud or it could be a, a plane or a balloon or whatever, a Zeppelin even. Um, so anyway, it is seen flying, doing this maneuver I'm describing. And then it left because um, just as your flashlight can't go infinitely far out into the cosmos, the radar only covers, you know, maybe let's call it 200 miles or something like that. Okay. So you get to the end of that range and then you're no longer visible to it. So you go invisible again. So now the plane is somewhere over the Andaman Sea um, and it is electronically dark. It's beyond the range of Malaysian military radar. And um, it is invisible to the world. It is, and so somebody, if somebody has taken this plane, they've gotten away scot-free. Nobody can see them. Do, do we know how long that would have been from the U-turn to that point? An hour. Like one an hour. hour. Okay. And so then the, the, to me, the, the, the thing, the, the core event of this whole mystery happens which is this box gets turned back on that had been turned off. It's called the satellite data unit. It's a component of the satellite communication system. Mm. So when I talk about it, I sometimes call it the SATCOM. I sometimes call it, I sometimes call it the SDU. And this is the, this is the box that is allowing the plane to talk to a satellite. 
that's that's run by Inmarsat, which is a British-based company that has ties to the U.S. government, U.K. government, a lot of speculation, spookiness, spookiness <laughs> the usual suspects. Um, but this but this company will later look into its databases and realize that it has recorded transmissions that were automatically sent between the plane and the satellite, and then onwards to a ground station, and then onwards to London, where it was recorded. So there's been a, a lot of discussion about how do you turn back an SDU? How do you turn it back on? And then secondarily, why would you turn it back on? And this is everything that we know about the next six hours hinges on the fact that this box was turned back on because for the next six hours, Inmarsat was recording these periodic transmissions that were taking place. So this, the way the system works, it's a bit like you have a cell phone, right? And it's constantly, even when you're not using it, it's figuring out what the nearest tower is and it's just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm logged in. And that way, if someone wants to call you, they can send, it'll come through because the system knows where you are. Right. So the, the SATCOM on this plane had a similar kind of arrangement where if nobody used this system, which you can use to make calls, you can send data, text, that kind of thing. It's, it's a lot like a cell phone, really. Um, if it didn't hear from the user in an hour, it would say, hi, are you still there? It doesn't want to keep mm. you logged in if you're not there. Maybe you've shut down, maybe you've left and you're now talking to a different satellite because you've gone to a different part of the world. And so um, the, um, the, so, the, so every hour the satellite is saying, hi, are you there? And the plane is saying, yes, I'm here. Now to slightly complicate matters, if something happens, like somebody does use the system, then that clock gets reset. And so mm. twice in the span of the next six hours, people at Malaysian Airlines were like, damn, where's our plane? Let's call. So twice. And what does that do? So if it gets reset, how does that affect the data? It means that the clock starts from then. So if, if, the, if, you ha if the, mm. an hour goes by, the satellite says, hi, are you there? The plane says, yes. And then another 20 minutes go by and someone calls, now the system is being used and so that timer goes on, so it's another hour. Hmm. It's, so it's, it's not really that important, but it just, it wasn't ex ex initially when- Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, please smash that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.